In this Appfolio video, we're going to address how to open a work order, go through the entire process of filling out that work order. In this case, it's going to be with a vendor, and then the vendor completes the job and the steps that we take to finally not quite close out the order, and I'll explain that from the property manager's perspective, but take it as far as you can take it uh, with knowing that the job has been complete by the vendor. So I'm logged in here to the dashboard is the first screen that I see. I then go to maintenance, work orders, and here are all of my work orders, but this is a new work order. In this case, I have received word from a resident at 949 Natoma Street in San Francisco that there is a problem with the glass on the front door. So I open a new service request here by clicking new service request and I begin by simply filling out the, the, the information for the work order. So I've got the property name, 949 Natoma Street. In this case it's not unit specific because we're dealing with the front door. I do have uh, permission to enter and I plan to give the vendor permission to enter as well. Description. Okay, the glass on the front door is damaged. It has been owner approved. Now, I can check that because I actually have reached out to the owner and made them aware of the issue and told them approximately how much it's going to cost. I've done this work sort of offline and, and in this case before putting the work order in. So I'm comfortable checking owner approved. If I hadn't done that, I would not check owner approved at this, as this likely will be a job that's over $500. And at this property, $500 is the limit that I can spend before I need to get owner approval. Vendor instructions. So in this case, I'm using a vendor outside of To Be Living. So I may want to give them a little more instruction or at least tell them to contact me uh, with questions. Okay, so I'm telling them there's a lockbox, they can contact me for the code, and I am going to assign it to myself, and I am going to assign it, in this case, to Golden State Class. All right, I'm also going to assign it to Brant because he works on this property as well. All right, so we've saved this. So there it is. I've got all the information I need for this work order to get going. Now, the next step here is could could depend on how you've addressed this work order with your vendor. If your vendor has been in contact with you, knows what they need to do and is already on their way to the property, this next step may be superfluous. However, it is always a good idea to put as much information into Appfolio as possible. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to send an email to Golden Glass, or sorry, Golden State Glass. Any email that you send within Appfolio stays within Appfolio and makes it that much easier to, to, to retrieve that information should you need it. Okay, it's as simple as that. So then I would send it 
In this case, I'm not going to because we've already uh, compl actually completed this, this work order. So that would be sent and uh, we would have that information in Appfolio for us to address later. So the time goes by, the vendor addresses the issue, they fix the problem, and they've now uh, told you it's complete. The next thing to do is to mark this as waiting. Waiting is the status of a work order that's complete by a vendor. So that means the vendor has finished the job, has communicated that to you, that the job is complete, and you're now waiting for the invoice. All right, waiting on invoice. Next step here is receiving the invoice. So, invoice for work order done at 949 Natoma Street. I've got the invoice. In this case, this will be for another video, Golden State Glass was not a vendor within Appfolio when this job had been done, so that was a step I needed to take care of. I did, with the help of Alex, thank you very much. And once that was complete, I sent the invoice to Scott saying, please pay this invoice for work order 8096. And I also gave him a little bit of a heads up that there were other expenses coming forth and we should uh, hold back a little cash. That's, that's something that you can do when you know that that is uh, the case. But in this case, the, what I'm trying to, to, to illustrate here is you've now received the, the invoice from the vendor, send it to the appropriate accountant on this property, and the ball is now in Scott's court or Juan's court, depending on who your accountant is. But from your perspective, a waiting work order is complete. There's nothing more for you to do as a property manager. It's now up to the accountants to pay the invoice and to fully close out the work order. The last thing I'll note on waiting work orders is when you're reviewing your work orders and trying to determine uh, which ones you need to follow up on, a waiting work order should not be in waiting for more than two weeks without an additional response to the vendor. So if two weeks go by and you haven't received an invoice yet from that vendor, you need to reach back out and say, the job's done, we'd like to get you paid, please send me an invoice. If you have received an invoice and you've sent it over to Scott or Juan, Give them two or three weeks to get that paid and closed out. Uh, and, if, and if it's still not closed out after that amount of time, a gentle nudge uh, to them is certainly appropriate. I'll obviously, keep in mind that they're both very busy with the amount of uh, accounting and units that they have on their plate. And that's it. That's a new work order that gets complete by a vendor step by step.